Hi, and welcome back to Grace by Faith Network. I'm Rose Shivers, and I'm hosting another Freedom Friday. And this week, it is Juneteenth. It is Father's Day weekend. It's a lot of reasons to celebrate. And um, I wanted to share with you all about our kings, about our black kings, about our young men kings. And a lot of times when I was growing up, I didn't hear a lot about what men should be doing. I heard a lot about what women should be doing. And, um, you know, there's a lot at play there, some systemic things. Religion has been weaponized um, across the centuries for power and control and dominance. And so it's, it's a lot of things at play there, but I want to spend a little time uh speaking from my understanding of what our king should be doing and you know if people may say like what authority you're a woman you can't tell no man what they should be doing but if you look at proverbs 31 and i know we are accustomed to proverbs 31 a wife of noble character um who can find she's worth more value more than rubies i know we like to jump to that but the first part of proverbs 31 talks to a king from his mother and so what authority do i have to speak on what our king should be doing i too am a mother of two kings two young black men and so it is my responsibility to guide them and share with them um, how to make sure they set their lives up for success and according to God's word. So what should our kings be doing? In this uh, Proverbs, and you know, we study Proverbs when you want to be wise, right? So in this Proverbs, this mom, uh, we often associate this book of the Bible to um, the author being King Solomon and his mom being Bathsheba. So we see this mother talking to her son and she emphasizes her connection to her son. She says, you my son, you the son of my womb, you the son of my answer prayers. And like this threefold connection um, that just speaks to the tenderness and the love and the relationship that she had with her son. So she's trying to share this wisdom with him. And she says, my son, like, I pray for you. Because we know if Bathsheba had actually um, had a child that died. And so uh, we now call those rainbow babies. And Janae is actually my rainbow baby. But um, she says, I pray for you. And just like I pray for my son, you know, I had made some very bad decisions at that time in my life. Um, and I really wanted to... Uh, have a baby. I wanted my womb to be blessed again. And I prayed for this son. And so his mom is saying like, I pray for you. You are answer prayer. And so then she goes on to say in uh, verse three, she talks to him about what you do not, should not be doing. She starts off with what you should not be doing. Women, wine and alcohol. Okay. Mom just got straight to the case. Don't spend your energy on women. And we know God created women. And we look good. Like in a potato sack, you can still see how God created us. And, our, and just our beauty and our beautifulness. Um, but she says, don't spend all your energy on women. That the, there are more important things than spending your energy on women, on sex, on thinking about porn all the time. Like... There are things that you should be handling and doing and it's not spending all your time on it, on women. And she says, because if you spend all your time on women, they ruin kings. Women, not wives, women ruin kings. And we see Solomon had over 700 concubines, uh, 700 wives, 300 concubines. And he, Apple didn't fall for from the tree, right? He, his daddy his daddy was overtaken with women and so we see that like they can ruin kings they can turn your heart away from god and scripture even says that about solomon that they actually turned his heart away from god why is this man on earth and fell victim to chasing after women and what women wanted from him instead of what god wanted from him 
So we want to encourage our kings today. Don't spend your energy on women. They they gonna be there, you know. But there's some other things that God is developing in you that He wants you to spend your time and attention on Him. And then she talks about wine and alcohol. Like uh, we know that this can alter your ability to perform as a king. This can alter your ability of how people see you, their perception of you. So like kings, like she even gave him examples of when it's acceptable. Like, we talking about kings, you up here. But here are some reasons for ex other people to um, indulge in alcohol and wine. She said, like, if they going to die, give them a sip. But you ain't going to die, you the king. You got the power of life and death on, in your tongue, in your mouth. And then she talks about, um, like, if they're poor in spirit, like, let them drown themselves in their sorrow. But you, you king, your hope is in Christ. Like, you you don't drink your days away. You got too much to be thankful for. So let's remind our kings about that. And then she goes to talk about the things that he should focus his attention on. And she says, like, yo, protect people without a voice. Right? Protect people without a voice. Protect your family. Protect your your kingship, your sonship. Protect protect those who are facing injustice. Stand for justice. She even tells him explicitly, stand for justice. Like stand for it. Um, because in those times a king was the judge. And so you had to judge between these issues that were coming and you had to make quick decisions and have your discernment intact so that you can lead a kingdom come on kings we need you to stand for justice we need you to be a sober mind we need you to ask god to create in me a clean heart like hide my word in your heart so that i may not sin against you so that i can lead my family so that i can lead my peers come on young king you got some people in your schools that's looking up to you and they need to see you standing up for the people that are discriminated against that are talked about that are stereotyped that are bullied in the workplace come on king stand up for justice and so then the scripture goes on to say, who can find a wife? Her value is more precious than rubies. Because kings, when you do these things, oh my gosh, you don't got to chase off the women. Now you're going to attract somebody that's more valuable than rubies. Come on. Her character. But I could go on and on, y'all, because I be preaching to my son. He's 16. He's turning 17. And, you know, uh, they need the word of God to help them. It talks about it being a light and a lamp. This is a dark world we living in. And God's word say that it's going to be a light and a lamp to their path. This is how they move forward. This is how our kings take back their position. This is how we as women, as mothers, influence the next generation. This is how we encourage our husbands. Come on now. So this weekend, you know, think about the kings in your life. Like, my sons are kings, my baby, and my husband is the king, okay? Matter of fact, used to call him King Josh, we would say all the time, uh, you know, he was the handyman. He can fix anything, and he might fix you. That's the king. He makes the decisions around here, and I'm so happy to call him my husband. So how do we encourage our husbands and, and adjust their crown? And so uh, let this word... Uh, settle into your spirits, you know, find a way to encourage our young kings, to mentor our young men, and to draw them and bring them back to look towards the cross, to think about Christ Jesus, the high priest, the everlasting king, how he stands for justice, 
okay? How he protects us from danger seen and unseen. Like that's our king. How can we help them to emulate Christ? So happy Father's Day to all the fathers. I was triple blessed to have three dads. Happy Father's Day to my late father, Bobby Watson Sr., to my godfather, W.L. Johnson, and to my stepfather, Gerald Fields. And happy Father's Day to the love of my life who blessed me to be a mom, Joshua Shivers Sr. And most importantly, thank you to our Heavenly Father for giving us fathers after his own heart. And then if by chance your father was not in your life or hurt you or harmed you in any way, God says that he takes up the orphan and that he covers you with wings like an eagle. You got a father. You got a father who cares about you and loves you. Y'all celebrate Juneteenth. We've been freeish since 1865 down here in Texas. But guess what? God say whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I don't care what no piece of paper say. I don't care what the laws say. I don't care what prejudiced people say or what social constructs try to make you say about yourself or think about yourself. God has said that you were free. And not only did he say you was free, okay? He said free indeed. Take it to the back. <laughs> So y'all have a blessed, blessed weekend. Bye.